Welcome to my review of the 2024 LEGO Star Wars May 4th promotional set. A promotional set that some people think is so good, it actually makes for a bad promotional set. I'll discuss that seemingly impossible idea by the end of this video, but first I want to go in-depth on the 40686 Trade Federation Troop Carrier. It has 262 pieces, and on LEGO's website, they value this as a $30 set, but you cannot buy it. This is only free with purchases direct from LEGO of $160 or more from May 1st to May 5th, 2024. Right off the bat, the colors on this box art really pop and I appreciate how fun it makes this whole thing look and I actually I've never thought about this but they really should put a May 4th logo on these May 4th sets I mean we have the 25 years of episode 1 logo on the top right and we have the 25 years of Lego Star Wars logo on the bottom left I May the 4th be with you logo would actually make a lot of sense to have on these May 4th sets every year anyway the back of the box is similarly colorful and fun and I gotta sneak in somewhere here in the intro that this set is totally paying tribute to the 2001 Battle Droid Carrier set we'll look closer at those two sets later in the video but let's get into our minifigs. There's six regular battle droids and two pilot battle droids for eight total battle droids, which is sick for what is effectively a $30 set. Now, the regular battle droids are everything you've seen in battle droids before, but the pilot battle droids are actually new and unique to this set as of its release. But I don't expect these to say exclusive as a May 4th figure, which ultimately is what I really want out of a May 4th promo is some sort of exclusive figure we wouldn't have gotten otherwise. But this year of all years, 25th anniversary, we're getting six different figures that we wouldn't have gotten otherwise, including dope ones like Darth Malak. So I can look past that this year. With the 2015 pilot on the left and the new one on the right, you can see the black little circle in the middle is a really nice detail added in, and there's little black outlines on the tan print in the center that help make it pop. So I think this is a nice small improvement to the pilot battle droid that was totally unexpected, but very welcome. Moving on to the droid carrier build, the first thing I want to say is that the color scheme on this thing is amazing. The brown mixed in with some tan and gray just looks so good. I love that they went back to the classic color scheme for the droid carrier. Pilot area on the front of the droid carrier looks really nice. There's some nice small detailing on the side. There's even the headlight here, which you can move up or down as you please. Obviously, I like to leave it in the normal position as it was on the box. Then we actually have a bit of shielding here, brick built with the brown color bricks. That looks really nice. And then there is space for your two battle droids pilots one little slot in the front and I do mean a little slot just a one by two studs and for the droid that'll go behind him I mean there's tons of space back here you could really place them anywhere but we'll keep them nice and snug there near the front so I think it's really nice that they included the accurate number of two battle droid pilots on the front end of this droid carrier because on the 2001 set they actually only included one so I would have thought just to pay tribute to it they would have only included one here but I'm not going to argue with the more accurate thing and of course more value for your gift with purchase here. There are also some similar design things like the headlight, exact same design there on that 2001 set, so it's pretty cool. Also, the front end is similarly shaped, although they've done away with that printed part that they used to have. It's it's not printed here, not even a sticker of detail, just bricks, but I actually like the brick design. It looks nice. Looking at the back two-thirds of the droid carrier here, I think it's very well designed. I love that they use these rounded bricks here. I think that gives it a nice soft look, as well as the inverted tiles here. I think that looks great, but of course, the star of the show for many people will be the battle droid racket at the back and we'll start with the storage rack for your weapons. These are one by three plates with open studs so you can place all six of the battle droid weapons in super easily. Now it should surprise no one that this weapon storage is inspired by the weapon storage from 2001. It's a pretty cool similarity. Finally making it to the droid rack all you have to do is take a battle droid and put them on the two studs that are there. Now what's interesting is that on the box Lego actually depicts the battle droids as having two different positions to be in when on the droid carrier. You can have them placed in all standing up like this which I think looks good or you can have them all bent over like they're in their storage position being transported in the movies. Now my only complaint with this is that I do find it a little bit difficult to get the battle droid feet to connect the whole way to the studs sometimes but otherwise I think it's a pretty good system. Now I think a lot of people will prefer the standing position but the bent over position is also how they had it on the 2001 battle droid carrier. That was somewhat out of necessity with the way that they attached to the poles behind them but just because this set is a tribute to that original set the way that I would choose to display it is with them bent over even if it looks a bit awkward. Real quick before I show you the last feature, the bottom of this thing has a bunch of inverted tiles so that it can slide pretty easily on most surfaces. But if you want to bring your battle droids out into the field of battle, they cannot really bend down out of this position. I mean, it does bend down slightly, which is kind of cool, but really you want to pull the entire droid rack away from the droid carrier like that. And it's on a really simple rail system, like really basic. It's so basic, in fact, it's exactly what they used in 2001. And it's a really small thing 
thing, but they still use these green pieces on the inside for the droid carrier. I love that that is there. It's so cool to see the same system with the same color, just nice. Now with the entire thing removed, these panels can fold down to drop off the battle droids. And so it's pretty cool. Now, of course, it's not gonna do it for you. You still have to physically remove the battle droid. It's not a fully functional system, but it's pretty dope that the thing drops down to allow you to pull the battle droid off. And it just adds to kind of the immersion and realism of the set. And let's see if it's any easier to place battle droids on the studs with it off. Yeah, a little bit easier, but the functionality of it is really awesome to be able to drop the battle droid off into the battlefield. I don't know why, but if you wanted to know what it looked like inside, that is the inside. There is one more thing in this set, and it's this 25th anniversary brick. It's in tons of sets this year. It honestly did not need to be in this set. I'm not going to argue with extra value, of course, but... It really didn't need to be here. And we all know a 25th anniversary Phantom Menace movie brick would have gone hard in this set. Now this promo is clearly good, but is it too good? Only obtainable as a gift with purchase by spending $160 or more with LEGO, this set has a significantly higher barrier to entry than if it were just sold for $30. The only argument I see any merit in is for the folks that see this set as an army builder and want to build their army with it. Some people are using the box's open-ended age rating to claim that this is just a toy for kids and that they're not going to be able to buy it because you have to spend $160 to get this for free, which you technically may be right. There may be kids out there that want this that aren't going to be able to get it, but this set is clearly made as a celebration of the LEGO Star Wars fandom for our 25 years of unbridled consumerism. It is a remake of the 2001 droid carrier very specifically, and it's made with the love and passion that many fans want to see a set like this made with and it makes for a very cool GWP. Now I think it's also worth noting that when I was 10 years old if I wanted to get a battle droid carrier the only available option would have been the MTT which was $100 and came with a free battle droid carrier. So in some ways everything's changed but nothing's changed. I think it's also notable that LEGO has completely refused to return to the polybag minifigs of old for May the 4th, where you would just get a cool minifig when you spend about $50 or more. They're obviously trying to entice people to spend more money at their stores or on their website through this May 4th promotion. Whether you view that as really evil company trying to extract every penny out of you, or hey, it's a nice gift with my purchase, depends on who you are. With all of that said, I think a gift with purchase should inherently be desirable and this set is very desirable. It's essentially just a catch-22. I do not want to go back to the days of these relatively lame May 4th promos, sets that I would not have wanted to buy otherwise. This set may be too cool for school for you, but for me, it hits all the notes. The last thing I'll say is that this isn't the only droid carrier set LEGO has ever released. 2001, 2011, and 2015 all had droid carrier sets, so it's not like LEGO hasn't released cheap, affordable, easy-to-get droid carrier sets. They just did this one as something that's really cool for fans of original LEGO Star Wars sets to be able to get for May 4th as a cool promotional item. I just personally don't see any harm in that. I think this is a really dope gift with purchase. I think it's a really cool celebration of 25 years of both LEGO Star Wars and The Phantom Menace mixed into one as a throwback to that 2001 droid carrier. To me, this set is quite literally a 10 out of 10. It's as perfect as they come. Yes, I agree. It would be cool if you could just buy it. I think it is both a really good set and a really good promo, but at the end of the day, Day, if it's such a good promo that you want it to be a set, that means it's a really good promo. I think it's worth getting if you have the opportunity to get it during the May 4th promotional period of 2024 or sometime afterwards, depending on what the secondary market does with this set. Obviously, a lot of people are going to want it, so the price will probably be relatively expensive. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about this amazing set in the comments section below. How many would you have bought if it was available for just $30? Hit the like button if you enjoyed, and you can check out more 2024 LEGO Star Wars set reviews on the end screen now.